I'm Chris, the owner of Machete Comics. I am a comic illustrator and a comic writer for Machete Comics, and I've also done tons of freelance work for other companies and individual contracts. Um, thanks for checking me out. The Blundell Show has asked me to do a professional guide to making comics, okay? So uh, I know a lot of people out there nowadays use tablets or computers to draw on. We're going to use the old school approach uh, to, to start with things, I do color and um, do my placements on the computer. I use a Mac computer, that's in the downstairs studio. But that's way, way, way in the future, my friends. What we're going to do today is we're just going to start from the beginning, okay? I'm going to take it slow with you folks. I'd like to mention that uh, this episode is sponsored by Super Zuka, Scare and Destroy. These are some stickers that they sent me. Very cool stuff. As I'm told to flip it, there we go. Sorry about that. There we go. So that's the way it goes. Uh, very cool. Uh, so you can find them superzuka.com. They have t-shirts, stickers, mugs, all kind of great pop culture stuff. All right. Cheers, my friends. Okay. So as I mentioned, we're going to do a little bit of the old school method. I went to the Joe Kubert School of Comic Book Art in New Jersey uh, in the mid-90s. Yeah, such a long, long time ago, right? Um, but uh, I've been working on it ever since, and I do pay my bills with comic book artwork, which is a very cool thing to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So, first, let's get into this. Here's some tools we use. Um, it's funny how things have changed since when I very first started drawing back seriously, or being a professional artist back in the, in the late 90s. So, here are some pencils that I use. I don't know if you can see that very well. Can you get that? It's like a mechanical pencil, right? And you insert the lead in there. You see how thick that one is? Yeah, okay. So, and then uh, I have this one I like as well. Now you're going to notice this is another mechanical pencil. And this one is a little sharper. And you just click the end of it to get it to come out like that. This one's same click in the back. Okay. Um, of course, you know, you don't have to use the new, new ones. You can also use pencils. But, you know, be sure you're, you're paying attention to what it says, whether it's 2B, 2H. The Bs are heavy meaning darker, the H pencils are lighter, okay? So depending on, usually you start with an H, and when you get your ID, you go in with your B pencils, okay? Um, of course, if you use one of those, an old school pencil, you're going to want to use a sharpener. But if you have the mechanical pencils, you don't need a sharpener. If you're on a computer, you don't need that either, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why it, it you should at least be doodling and drawing with a pencil here and there. Well, first reason is why not and why aren't you if you want to become an artist, you know what I mean? Um, but also, we're going to need an eraser. Wow, huh? Spectacular. But, look at that eraser. There we go. We got one to get into little... So this one's got... Uh, there, the eraser there pops out. So it gets into, into the smaller spots. Sometimes I like to use a blue pencil for my roughs. A uh, blue pencil crayon. Whatever. You'll, uh, it doesn't show up on film. Uh, you'll, if you put the setting correctly, if you'll see that my comic book pages that I use will have the blue outline on them get into that when we get into our professional paper that we're using. Okay, so pencils. Uh, I just keep a ruler here beside me. Nothing too amazing, but make sure it's got something underneath it so it sits off. Um, you see, th those are generally to keep it off the page a bit. These things here, you'll see. Plus, it also grips it, but also so the ink won't stick to it, okay? I just keep that on my window ledge here. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, one of the things you may need, if you're like me, is glasses. Okay, so don't forget your glasses. Usually I have them on top of my noggin. Um, all right. This is what I keep most of my stuff in. Okay, uh, now you don't want to go too far over to that line. I'm going to bring that to you. There we go. Let's bring that over here. Here we go. I'll pick this up and just show you. So here is my little art caddy. Isn't it cute? It's an art caddy. Da -da -da -da. And I generally have this little guy in here because I use him to draw. He's a drawing tool as well. Look at all my inking tools, right? You see it like inking, 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 inking. Um, my brush for old school inking. This uh, we're going to get to eventually inking, but these are some of the tools that I have. This caddy makes it makes it super easy. I think it was like six bucks, maybe. No, maybe fifteen. Wow, my memory. I can't remember numbers very well, but I can tell you everything about Spider Man. Okay, so there's my my little art caddy. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now this over here, I have a female as well, and these are cool little things. They have little stands that you can put them on. And they also come with swords that you can put in their hands, and laptops, and there's a cell phone. There's all kinds of neat little things that you could gear these people with. Um, and then you can action pose. I might use these a few times when I've had trouble getting a pose right. Really good for Spider-Man and things like that, right? Okay, so those are the basic tools that I use. You get the mechanical pencils, 
You have your old school pencils, that's just normal pencil. Uh, erasers, you need erasers and stuff. Now, just doodling. The, the best advice that you can give any artist, anybody who wants to, uh, to draw more, get better at drawing, is to draw more, sorry. Um, draw, just keep drawing. You want to get better at drawing, you draw more. Draw, draw. That is the best advice I could give anybody, which is why I say that it's always great to have a pencil and some paper on hand, like just scrap paper. This is what I do, like, just mindlessly. There's just some mindless, this is just mindless doodles, right? Just hanging out here or downstairs or whatever. Sometimes you'll come up with little characters for stories that I don't want to show you too much. That's not, that's not out there yet. Whoops, don't want to show the wrong thing. Okay, so let's put those down there for the rough copies of things, unless I'm missing one. No, we're all good, folks. Okay. So, scrap paper. Don't throw it away. Doodle on it. Or use it for just... For, for using for your inking things. Like I use it to, to wipe my brush on occasionally. I think there's some guitar tab that I didn't throw out. I just wanted to put it on the other side. You can name what the band is or the artist. You win a prize. Okay, this is another uh, book that I like to carry around. This is great for traveling. Uh, so it's great because you take this and I'll grab my favorite pencil, you know what I mean, which is this one, and I'm all set. I'm, I can, I, I'm all set. Like I can, I can do whatever I want. Um, so I'm just... Well, I'm going to show a little bit of this. There's just some quick sketches. This is my, like, doodle book that I just, I just, this is my on-the-road sketch, or if I just feel I'm watching TV, and I, I've got an idea for something that I want to draw. I'm um, watching Ben and Movie, probably at that time, I don't remember. All kinds of Spider-Mans, you know, some Star Wars. Yeah, I was on a Star Wars kick there. It's actually Mitch Marner and a, yeah, a Phoenix. My wife always says I don't draw enough females. There's my own Stormtrooper, again, more Star Wars. Ah, more Star Wars. I was watching a lot of Star Wars, I think, when at this point. And this point. Anyway, it goes on and on and on, right? And this is this is what you want. It's something like this where you just doodle. Look at just doodle, okay? That color one sucked. Pretend you didn't see that. Anyway, these books are great. I saw these at Walmart for like eight bucks uh, yesterday. I just happened to see it. I've got a bunch of them though, which is cool. I like to have that. Alright. Um now, also, sitting at your kitchen table is fine, uh, but you're going to get a sore back if it's flat, and that's not good. You're going to be arched over like that, right? Um, so I have a table here, as you can see, and it moves up and down. It's flexible. Uh, I got this one. I got this one at Kijiji for 70 bucks, I think. Right? Yeah, 70 bucks, Kijiji, I believe. Yeah, something like that. I went and picked it up. It's great. Uh, it's, it's perfect. So my dog's just winding a bit down there. Don't mind him. He's dreaming. You have the guard dog, right? Um, yeah, so my drawing table's great. I love it. you got to have this up like this. I like it. Let's put little stickers on there and stuff. Now, here's a little portable board. If I'm ever drawing on site somewhere, or if I'm doing lessons somewhere, um, this is great, especially for rough rough copies of things. You want your drawings to be nice and loose, which I'm about to get into. But this is just a nice little piece. You can clip your artwork in there, and you can set it on something so that it's popped up. It's propped up, right? Or just carry it around. So this is handy for on-site, off-site jobs, and off-site lessons and such. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I was asked to do um, professional comic book lessons. So um, a lot of times I've done children's lessons and sometimes I get, I try and amalgamate both of them. This is just, um, some kids might get this, but mainly this is for, you know, adults or older people who can kind of grasp everything I'm, I'm talking about here. All right, my dog is still making lots of noises. What I like to do uh, before I, I get a page going is obviously get an idea. So we're going to start with the coolest part of my opinion is the cover. I love drawing covers because after you're drawing like little panels upon panels upon panels of things, you're going to want to draw a cover. It's just natural. Okay, so the cover that I'm going to show you is already completed except for the coloring on it. Uh, we're not hitting that stage for a while anyway with lessons here that I'm showing you. Now... This is a character that I created called Skeletron. This is uh, issue two, cover two. No, this is the first cover. The second cover is the variant cover. This is issue issue two, cover one. Sorry, sorry. Um, now, when I do things, I write down just a quick script here. I like just not like it's just there's you know page eleven, page 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's how I rough things out. So sometimes the story that you have in your mind. Now, mind you, I'm writing and drawing all of this one, okay? Um, we have, uh, well, my wife, she does the placements and some of the coloring, we split a little bit of the coloring on this issue anyway. So when you're creating something like this, you, you, you sometimes want to go off of what the issue uh, consists of. 
to kind of exemplify your cover. Other times you can just do an homage to other covers. An homage is where you take like a classic uh, Spider-Man holding uh, the crook in his hand and just redraw it with your character. I've actually done that. Looked really cool. Um, so covers uh, can either show what's going on in the comic book or it can just be something sporadic. That's why again why I love covers. Like you know it's just it's it's a lot of fun and uh, make sure you leave room for certain elements. But as I mentioned with the sketching, so I had an idea in my mind of what I needed for issue two. Is my character is going to be surrounded by these coils and. Uh, little blades and hands, right? So here is, uh, here's my rough copy. As I say, just scrap paper. So here's my rough copy. Now what I really liked about this was the shape of it. I love the fluid shape of that and the way he was in the center. And I, I just kind of could feel what I could bring off of this, okay? So what I do next is I take my light box, or it's light box. I'm so old school, sorry, I'm showing my age. It's a light tablet now. And this is just one of those, this lights up. I don't have it plugged in, but this lights up. And you take uh, your page, like so. Like here's, here's what I ended up uh, going with. But I light box the small picture onto here because I really didn't want to lose the fluidity that I had going on. Um, as I mentioned, sometimes it's the shape of the objects that you will find visually pleasing. All right, so I started with that. I light boxed it onto a bigger piece of paper. Now this next paper I use, again, you shouldn't be spending, like if you're using paper, right? Which I, you should here and there. If you if you work on your tablet or computer, you should at least try this method. It's like getting your hands dirty, right? Like get in there, get in there. So um, I, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on paper until you're ready to do your final. And that's when you do your final is on these comic book boards, which we will get to. Now next I'm using, it's just sketch, uh, sketch paper with a fine tooth surface, okay? Um, it's for quick studies, you know, it, it's not uh, anything that can hold ink that well, uh, but I find it uh, fairly inexpensive as well, okay? And again, I'll fill this up with, this is a lot of rough copies of things I've done. Um, there's a Fantastic Four rough that I did. You can find the finished of that in the store. I don't think it's in the store yet, but it will be. Um, there, this is a, an example of the blue pencil I use for some character creation. So you can see that. Um, so these roughs, these are the roughs. Some of these turn into covers, right? Um, so if you have ideas, just fill pages with ideas, as I did with my, my gentleman there, uh, with Skeletron in my small page right here. Okay. And any kind of paper you want. And I got kind of, I guess, not to sound too uh, hippie that, but I, to get the vibe and the shape going, the flow. Once you do get that, and sometimes it's by accident, you'll look at your picture and it's like, wow, why does that look so cool? Like the cover of uh, Kiss Rock and Roll Over. Wow, the, the fluidity of that is amazing. I still, one of my favorite album covers ever. So there is my, that's my final pencils and they're rough. See how rough that is, right? Okay, but I got everything in there I wanted to. The next thing I want you to notice are the X's. Now, do you see those X's that are in there? Now, that represents a black area that is going to be inked out. Okay, so I'm going to fill that whole area with ink. If I go in there with the pencil, you guys can vouch for me on this, it gets all over your hands. That's why I'm saying to you computer folk, get in there and get your hands dirty. You know, you're going to get some pencil on you and stuff. It's great. <laughs> but you don't want too much pencil to make it too gross and messy. You do want to see some shadows though, right? But I kind of had an idea. The better you get at it, the more you can picture where shadows should be, okay? Now, if you can just check this out, we're going to do... Dun, dun, dun. Again, I light boxed onto a fine piece of comic book art paper. Sorry if I'm bouncing around here, folks. just don't want to drop everything. So you see how rough the first one... There we go. So there's our final. Hopefully I erased my pencils enough. I do have somebody erase my pencils occasionally for me, but they've been very busy lately. There's our, this, is, this is the cover for Skeletron Issue 2, all right? And this is the first cover, not the variant. So I penciled that, and I inked that. Next, it'll be scanned into the computer. We're going to put the placement in of the title Skeletron, the caption, the price, all that. I'm going to take you folks all through that as well. And I, the inside is a black and white gradient color. This will be a color. <laughs> this will be done in color. The inside's a black and white gradient, okay? So this is how I did all that, all right? So just to backtrack, folks, um, I knew what the story was in issue two. So in my mind, I, I, I envisioned what I wanted it to look like. Um, don't be afraid to get some, some references for things. I'm drawing... Uh, a lot of wrestlers lately, so I have these wrestling magazines, okay? So if your idea involves a wrestler, then make sure you look at some stuff. Don't swipe other people's pictures. 
Don't go ripping other people off. That's not a good habit to get in, okay? But if you want to redraw somebody wrestling or take a motif from it, scratch it out on rough paper, that's great. That's what you want to do. Um, for something like this, I don't believe I did use any reference. I think this was basically all out of my noggin because I created most of these things myself. That's my own character, and these are like kind of like zombie hands, so it's pretty easy to do, basically. I didn't really do anything like, like a, a car or anything where I really needed reference. Um, we'll get to that later, but this is just a simple way to do a cover, okay? So again, they had, had the idea. I did it down on a, on a small piece of paper right there, okay? Uh, I love the flow of that, though. It's just the shape, okay? Light, light, uh, got the light tablet out. Just another cheap piece of paper, just bigger though. This size of this is probably important. Um, this is 14 by 17 because you want to make sure that it fits your uh, comic page that I'm going to show you too, right? So 14 by 17 is the size you want, and you can go a little over. Um, Lonnie, do you remember the actual size of our comic panels? Uh, 11 by 17. 11 by 17. Lonnie does a lot of, or Lonnie does all the placements for uh, Machete Comics, so she knows sizes and stuff. Uh, it's a good person to have around you or working at your company, somebody who knows numbers. Is there anything like me? You do not know numbers. What day is it? What, what's the date today? 20, no? So you're not even try. Boom. Cheap paper. There's your sizes. You gotta go 14 by 17 on here. And this was, again, Lonnie, what's the size of our comic page? 11 by 17. No, that's the inside or the outside? The, the whole. The whole page? Yes, the whole okay. page. Okay, there we go. Because technically you can bring it over farther. Um, can you show them the little index markers there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they really, ooh, they really help you out that way. Okay. I'm um, just give you one more glance at this right here. There's the whole page. So you can see how they frame it in for you, man. All the framing's done. The sizing's done. So you don't have to do as much measuring and as much adding with numbers. So like me, you're like, hey, these are great. I had another artist friend of mine from Oshawa who I turned on to these, and he was like, dude, these are like the best. Thank you so much. And I said, you're welcome. We're all in it together. Okay, folks. Um, I was going to go over some comic book stuff that I bought and such and inspiration, but I've taken a lot of time on this first lesson just introducing things. Excuse me. So, next time I'm going to talk about comic books because you need inspiration. Even if, <clears throat> even if you're doing it professionally and you don't, uh, it's reflex. Um, sometimes you need inspiration. So I'm going to go over some comic book stuff, some cool things next time as well if I have time. But that was uh, episode one, tools, and uh, how we set things up. So we're going to do some actual penciling uh, next lesson or next visit, okay? Thank you, my comic book fans and friends. Uh, see you next time. Bye.